guys welcome back to my channel uh, I'm glad you can join me today uh, for those who are new welcome this is the little bean and me podcast channel this is a little channel about crocheting and knitting learning to knit I'm learning to knit um, some spinning mostly dyeing yarn because that's what I what's what I do and just pretty much general crafty adventures and different things so welcome if you're new welcome back if you're a returning viewer and subscriber i am so happy you guys could join me today um i'm hoping to make this a short one i feel like this is the goal every single week you know make a short episode um though i do enjoy watching longer episodes i'm a bit uh <laughs> burnt out on long episodes only because everybody's putting up their Rhinebeck footage so I'm just watching like hour hour and a half long um podcasts which is great but it's a long it's a long commitment uh, <laughs> watching all at once for me anyway um I'm constantly interrupted so um welcome today is Friday it is the Friday before Halloween which is so exciting um I have been up to some stitching this week some new dyeing techniques this week which I'm happy to share with you and just you know some general general fun stuff but just hey I hope you're enjoying your week and you're gonna have a good weekend um, let me introduce myself I'm Kayleen I am the principal fiber artist and yarn dyer behind little bean loves hand-painted yarn and little bean crochet on Etsy as always I'll put the information on the screen here for you um, so yeah, I have some exciting things to share today. I have a finished object, well two finished objects, uh, one that you may have seen and one that you haven't seen. I have a new cast on coming after one of my finished objects. Got some dyeing, so let's just jump in. So let me show you the finished objects that I have. Actually, I think one is right here in this Halloween bucket. No, it's not here. Where is it? Oh, it's right here. It's right here. So this, I'm not going to make you wait to see these. So this, this is my first pair of socks. I have a pair of socks, guys. So these are the socks that I showed uh, last week. I cast them on two at a time, cuffed down. These are just plain stockinette socks with maybe an inch and a half of ribbing. So I cast these on thinking I would make myself a pair of socks. I cast on too few stitches for myself, which is fine, so I'm like, well, maybe I'll give them to my mother, but my mom isn't going to be around here for maybe another, I don't know, few weeks, and I just wanted to finish them. I didn't want to have to wait for her to come, so I said, well, maybe I can give these to Cecilia, and guess what? They fit her. So these were done. Can you focus, please? Focusing, please. There we go. So these were done, cuffed down with a fish lips kiss heel and the standard kind of toe decreases I went by the Susan B Anderson smooth operator socks instructions but it's pretty standard you know you're decreasing on each side evenly um, and then Kitchener stitched for the toe so these socks almost match which is kind of cool you know there are slight differences between them I mean it's self-striping these were start started at the exact same point in the yarn I matched them as best I could but this one obviously has a small strip of black whatever I'm not OCD and then on the toes one has a little more orange than the other as you can see here but I did a Kitchener stitch on the toe this was my first time attempting a Kitchener stitch and it's a little there's a couple holes you can see here in the toe um, obviously my daughter she wore these she wore these yesterday <laughs> but they were only worn once so they have a small will you focus these here we go uh, you can see the small holes in the toe so I don't know if I just didn't cinch it tightly enough this one I think is worse so I, I might go back and restitch. I don't even know if I did it right. I was just following the directions in the smooth operator socks in that toe pattern. Look, you can see the end sticking out here. Stop focusing on my face. 
There we go. Okay, so you can see here my little attempt at a Kitchener stitch. It didn't quite go the way I wanted it to. So I might attempt it again. Uh, trying to fix that. There we go. Okay, so my first pair of socks, guys. Yay, I'm so excited. So I shared these on Instagram. If you follow me there, you've already seen them, but this is them. I don't have any sock blockers because I've never knit socks before in my whole life, but I'm very proud of these. So this is one finished object. And then the other finished object, which you may also see behind me, is this crochet hat. This I made for CC out of this yarn. I'm going to make her something else, but this is just Lime Brand Woolies Tonal. It's a chunky yarn, but I made her a hat for her costume. She is going as a pumpkin, so I made kind of just the green hat with vines. This is all done in half double crochet. This is done. This was done from the brim up. So I cast on, or I stitched up, however many stitches I thought I was going to need. It was just an estimation. Um, I measured it. She was next to me. I was measuring it on her head. And I did some front post and back post um, half double crochets. I did a couple of rows of into the back bar of the half double crochet to create this border between the brim and the actual hat. I did a full few rows of just straight up half double crochets and then I started doing some decreases I think right about here. This was the first row of decrease. Stop focusing on me. This was the first row of decrease. And so I did like two rows of decrease, then a crochet row, then a row of decrease, not decreased, and then I just decreased from the top up and I also did in the back bar so I created kind of a vine that goes up the top of the hat and then I did little tendrils so these are just um, I did a chain of so many random number pick a random number and then you do two I did two half double crochets in each space here we go to create these little tendrils so yeah, this was just a product of my own brain. So it'll sit on her head like this. She'll have the little tendrils coming off the back like vines, like she's a pumpkin or a gourd. She's going as a jack-o'-lantern, but I don't know how well her costume's gonna work out. So I have this, and then I'm going to make, this was one full skein. I think I had, I don't know, a few yards left over from one skein from this. And then I have one other full skein here. I think these are 100 grams, 113 grams, around four ounces of bulky yarn. So I think I'm going to make her um, maybe a little cowl and a pair of just kind of like hand mitts to keep her warm while we trick or treat next Monday. Uh, so yeah, that's my other finished object. Oh, it's a crochet object. Oh my goodness. I didn't go buy a pattern, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and then, oh, I have two works in progress. Actually, two. So this is in my casual fashion queen bag that I showed you last week, my little sock sack, and this is my other pair of socks that I cast on yesterday. These are a DK weight sock. This, you can see I have a mistake here. I have to fix it, I don't know how to fix it. Um, these I'm doing again, two at a time, cuff down. I did right around an inch of a cuff for these socks, and this is in my We Are All Mad Here colorway. So this colorway is dyed as an ombre in the skein, so I dunk dye one part of the skein, it grades the color out to be fading, so it doesn't, it's not a harsh transition. With the number of stitches that are on here, I think these are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 32 stitches for toddler socks for DK weight. So there are 32 stitches on here, so it's giving this nice striping effect, which is kind of fun. And you can see the pops of color throughout. So the We're All Mad here is, um, it's ombre dyed, but on the lighter end there's some bold speckles. The skeins that I have, the last batch that I did, weren't as bold as they were on my first run of the colorway. But it's just greens and reds, some yellows, so you can see right here. Just some pops of color, boop, 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 which makes it a bit fun. 
So I'm interested to see how these stitch up. You can see that one sock looks a little lighter than the other. I caked up the yarn into two balls. So one end of the yarn is on one side and then the other end of the yarn is on the other side. And so I'm going from each end in toward the center. So there's, you know, usually there is a difference between one half of the skein and the other half just based on how the yarn is dyed. But they're generally close enough. And I think they're coming out pretty cool, so I'm really excited. I think I've caught a little bit of the sock bug. I was chatting with some folks on uh, different fiber groups when I posted my finished socks, which are right there. And um, I was like, I really enjoyed doing the sport weight because I'm not, I'm not a fan of fingering weight yarn, only because I'm so used to the quickness of DK or a sport weight. So I think I'm just going to have to work myself down to a fingering weight. I have that lovely yarn that came with this from um, Sheena, the Mermaid Stream, which is this lovely like burgundy red with black flecks and it's just beautiful with the yellow contrast. Like I want to make myself a pair of socks, but I'm not <laughs> looking forward to fingering weight. But I thought I would cast these on for Cece because these were going to be a quick stitch and maybe she can wear them by Monday. So I think I'm at the point right now where I want to do the heel turn. I was trying to compare um, the length because I liked the length of these and this is exactly where the heel begins. So I think I need like another two or three rows before I begin the heel. I don't know if you can see. So I'm trying to decide where I'm going to start the heel. But I think I'll start the heel today on these and these should be done hopefully by tomorrow but I have a busy day today I have a lot of dying to do today I have probably six or seven custom orders that are sitting in my box that I said I would be dying today um, Tucker just went in for his nap I'm filming this so I'm hoping to get to that dye very very quickly soon after I publish this so then this is my other work in progress you guys saw it last week this is my sweater this is in the sunshine and bubblegum bag that the lovely Lynn sent to me and I have part of a sleeve done so I finished so last time we spoke I was somewhere around here sorry I'm talking into the sweater I was somewhere around here and so since we last spoke I finished the body of the sweater and now I'm working down the arm and you can see here where I didn't I'm just picking up on the second ball I'm so sorry, that probably has just blown out people's eardrums. But you can see here that this is much more boldly colored than this. And it's just a slight difference between the two skeins. And I think you can tell the difference, but I'm sorry, I keep looking up because I'm trying to see where, what I'm showing you. But you can see the difference here. So this is the Flax Sweater by Tin Can Knits. It's a very easy, easy to follow, easy to read easy to pick up pattern. So I've knit maybe three and a half inches. I have another three and a half or so to go before I start decreasing, I think, on the sleeve. But yeah, I'm so excited. I'm hoping, I hope it's done by Monday. I don't know if it will be, depending how much dye I work I get done. I have to teach tomorrow down at the yarn shop. I have to teach some crochet. But um, if I can squeeze in some knitting time on this, I think I will. So this was done in my own colorway. This is the Old Town colorway. Um, this this is in a non-superwash base, but it is a single ply, just like my Simple DK base. And it's a DK slash worsted weight, this yarn. This was done on the Malabrigo, Malabrigo single ply, non-superwash wool. It was my first dye of this color. And that was the yarn I practiced on. So that's that. So I'm very, 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 very pleased with my progress that I finished socks. I have a sweater that's almost done. I have another pair of socks that's about halfway done. I have Cece's hat done. Feeling good. So, so that's all I have for stitching this week. I haven't made any significant progress on any of my other projects because I wanted to finish the socks. I wanted to cast on another pair of socks and I want to finish that sweater. So I've been focusing a lot of my efforts on that. Let's get into some dyeing. So you'll see behind me some lovely sock blanks. So I decided in my last shipment 
One, I got my singles base back, which is really exciting. They stocked back up, my suppliers stocked back up, so yay. <laughs> uh, so I picked up some bags of that. So if I haven't already, um, the die to order section should include now the simple sock base. Uh, but these are, <laughs> these are sock blanks. Um, as you can see, they are pre-knit fabric that I have dyed. So I'll pop maybe a picture here of, say, this colorway. This is the Black Lake. I dyed these up this week. I have several of each of these colors available, so I'll just go through them. This is the Black Lake. It has some nice deep navy tones, some bright blues and greens, black. This is nice deep blue, black. Nice deep, deep colors. So this is very beautiful. Um, this, this might be my favorite one, actually. Actually, this one, these two are my favorites. So this is Black Family Tapestry. So this is kind of the color palette was taken uh, from the, sorry about that. I have to get used to the fact that this camera stops me after 15 minutes. So this was taken, this is the Black Family Tapestry. This palette was kind of taken from the film representation of the, the um, Black Family Tapestry that hangs in Gribble Place. So it has some antique yellow, some nice deep navies into some black tones, which is really cool. This one is Harry's Fermented Chocolate Cauldrons. If you remember, Harry got a gift of chocolate cauldrons that was filled with love potion from Ramil Devane. Ramil Devane. So this has some chocolate brown, some, will this focus please? Camera, please. Uh, do, do, do. Okay. So this has some chocolate brown tones, some peachy pink tones. It's a pretty uniform feeling dye. It's not very high contrast, but it's got this lovely pink undertone here. It's like pink and peach, purple, plum, but all overcast with this brown color which is kind of cool. So this is Harry's Fermented Chocolate Cauldrons. I have that super strong love potion in them. This one is Exploding Lemonade, but it is Exploding Pink Lemonade. Uh, I dyed this first and then named it afterward because I was trying to think. It reminded me of Pink Lemonade, but I wasn't sure in the Harry Potter universe if there was a lemonade drink, and there is. It's Exploding Lemonade. So this is Exploding Pink Lemonade which is mostly a pink tone, tonal, with specks of yellow and deep pink, which is really fun. This one is Felix Felicis, which is the Liquid Luck Potion. So this whole entire sock blank is a yellow tonal with real overtones of gold and orange kind of to represent, you know, the look of the molten gold in the potion. The next one I have is Sectum Sempra. This one and the Fermented Chocolate Cauldrons, looks pr they look pretty similar. They were actually dyed with different colors, but the palette ended up very similar. This is more brown and pinks like deep browns and pinks. And then this has um, some lighter browns, like blood tones, so like an aged blood look, and some spots of bright red. This is called Sectum Sempra, which is the incantation that Harry used when he was fighting with Malfoy. He found it in the, the potions book, Snape's potions book. And if you know Sectum Sempra, it's where it's a very gruesome spell. So you can see there's a lot of blood tones in here. There we go. It's a really nice palette. I'm enjoying this one as well. And then this one is the most out of my comfort zone. So I have those fluorescent dyes that I got last week. And so I made this color 
This is called Peeves Loves Umbridge and it is a bright purple like fluorescent purples and pinks with speckles of blue, green, gray, black, kind of all over it. This is like the craziest one. So this is Peeves Loves Umbridge. Obviously it has that nice pink undertone for Umbridge and it's all messed up because of Peeves. So I thought that was kind of cool. I hope you enjoy that. Lovely. So I have a bunch of these in the shop right now. I don't think any of them have sold yet. They just went up this week. I kind of put them up on an off day. So if you're watching this and you like any of those, just head on over to the shop and you can grab them. I do have an active coupon for, I think, 25% off. It's called Yay Socks because I finished my socks this week. So if you missed that post on Instagram, you can use the coupon Yay Socks to get 25% off your order. I do ship worldwide. I do. So let me see if I had any questions. I don't think I did this week. I did want to say a nice welcome to Yura, which is Piano Girl 000, and Clover Dilly, who is Christina on Ravelry. Thank you for joining the group and thanks for introducing yourself. I really appreciate that. Okay, so I did have a question from last week that I never answered. This was from Kristen on Facebook. She says, how do you find the time to dye and knit? I too started with crochet and have a hard time getting started knitting because I always feel overwhelmed. Any tips? So how do I find the time? <laughs> I feel like this is a very common question from a lot of people who know me and who don't know me or are just watching the podcast. I have two young kids. I have a son who is one and a daughter who is three. My daughter is only in school one day a week and for a full day and my son naps in the middle of the day <clears throat> but most of the time I'm home, two kids, crazy busy all the time. So how do I find the time to dye and knit? Well, to me, a minute lost is a minute wasted. So I usually spend a lot of my free time where I'm not actively tending to the kids, either knitting, dyeing, brainstorming ideas, crocheting, um, doing something related to fiber arts. The only time that I do have to film is today which is Friday because my daughter's in school and my son is napping so I have a nice extended period where I can get some things done. Um, I really do take advantage of nap time. If my son is napping um, I usually set Cecilia up excuse me excuse me I usually set Cecilia up with some television or an iPad something that's going to really hold her attention or I give her the Apple TV remote let her play games we have a lot of educational games on our Apple TV, so she likes to play those, um, so I can do some dyeing. And she knows that mommy does yarn work, so if I'm in the kitchen, she knows I'm dyeing yarn. And she just comes in and out, and I end up taking time away from that to uh, tend her. But usually nap time is the, the prime time for me to dye. So on Fridays, I end up taking some time out of that time frame so I can film for you guys, which is great. Um, but yeah, that's really what I have to do. I really have to have good time management otherwise I am just, I won't get anything done. Um, I'm happy that I can actually finish some things. This is why I take on small projects because I feel a lot less overwhelmed by them. I love shawls and I love scarves and I really am enjoying knitting a lot, a lot, a lot. Uh, but I find that I always do better if I start with something really small something that I can manage that I can put down and pick up when I need to you know socks I think that's why I'm enjoying these socks because the sport weight and the DK weight are knitting up so quickly that I feel like I'm actually accomplishing something so it, it's nice to pick up and put down so that's kind of my my main tip is just sort out your day even if you only knit a couple of rows at a time you just pick it up knit a little bit maybe on your lunch break and then put it away um and it's also about finding a way that you feel comfortable knitting. Again, I get a, that question a lot from crocheters. I have a lot of crocheters that watch my podcast. I'm sorry I don't show more crochet. Uh, this is the only crochet I showed today. But um, <clears throat> it's I get a lot of questions from crocheters who want to learn how to knit. And so I started learning. I, If you don't know, if you're a new viewer and you're just viewing this for the first time, I am a crocheter. By nature I've always been doing it I've been doing it for nearly 20 years I'm 32 years old I started when I was 13 um, and I've picked up and put down knitting a lot through the years and then the one thing that I found 
that made it stick for me was finding a material that I really liked to use. So crochet, I feel like I'm always stuck in the same loop where it's just craft store yarn and I don't feel very inspired by it. I, it's very rare that I find a pattern or something that I really like that I say like, oh, I want to stitch that right now. Um, so I'm a little burnt out on it, to be frank. But it's just because I've been doing it for so long. So it's the same thing with knit. I'm sure a lot of career knitters feel the same way about knitting, which is why they pick up crochet or spinning or something else. So it's about just finding something that's really interesting to you and finding a way that's comfortable for you to do it. Not everybody is a thrower. Not everybody is a flicker. So it's you find a way to work with the medium that's comfortable, that makes it enjoyable for you, and then you're going to enjoy what you make from it. So that is my big tip. Find your time. Plan it out, even if you need a couple rows at a time. Just enjoy what you're doing. Just sit and do it. Don't feel stressed. Don't feel like you have to finish five inches of a garment in one night. You know, just enjoy the process of it. And then also enjoy the physical process of, you know, taking the yarn and making it into something. Finding the way it's comfortable to hold your needles. Or if you're learning to crochet and you're a knitter, find a way that's comfortable to hold your hook. You know, do a few stitches at a time. Don't worry about finishing an entire blanket in a month. You know, just take it as it comes and enjoy the process. All right, so that's all I really have for you guys today. Um, I told you I was gonna try and keep this short, so I'm hoping it's around, you know, 25 or 30 minutes. I don't know how exactly long this is. So shop update, I already have some stuff up in the shop, so there's not really a shop update this week that's going on. Uh, today I'm spending a lot of time doing the custom order dyeing. I plan to try and get everything that was ordered this week, these last couple of days, out tomorrow. So if you're waiting on a package from me, um, I plan to ship things out tomorrow, which is Saturday. Uh, hopefully everything gets shipped out everything that's been waiting including my giveaway winner including all of these custom dies um, I just want those off my plate so keep an eye out for that if you haven't heard from me and you're waiting to hear from me check your inbox um, you might have a message that I suppose is all that is all that is all that is all so I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend enjoy Halloween if you're in the United States um, if not, I hope you enjoy whatever <laughs> equivalent there is, if there is any, uh, this coming Monday for you. Uh, in the U.S., Halloween is a huge thing. The, my kids are getting dressed up. <laughs> I don't know. Cece, I think this is really her first year, getting dressed up that she'll actually remember and like. She's already looking forward. She wanted to dress up as a jack o' lantern, so that's what we're doing. Uh, Tucker's going as a ninja turtle. I don't think he really cares. I don't think he's going to be very comfortable in his costume, but we'll go walk around with friends anyway. So, anyway, I hope you have an enjoyable weekend, and I will see you next time. Bye!